All right, guys. So if you watch the first part of the video that I had on Facebook, I walked through what you see here, which is the strategy and the goals targeting content. If you're watching this video and for some reason you didn't see that video, I want you to go backwards, um, uh, go, go find that. And um, I'll have that link in the email that you got to this video from. But more than likely, if you're getting to this video, you've already seen that one. So I'm not going to go through that in any more detail, but again, uh, just a quick high level overview, which is your strategy means you need to understand your goal. What are you trying to get out of creating the content for your personal brand? Who's your target audience? What are they looking for? And then the content's going to address both the goal and the target audience. So they have there. Now there's more parts to this. So let's walk through each of these different parts. And as you can see, there's an arrow on this that goes from left to right, or I guess this way in my video, left to right. And the reason that that arrow goes from left to right is that you have to start with strategy and we're going to move that direction as we go through this. So what's the next part of this? The next part of this is consistency. Now, when I say consistency, what I mean is across all of your personal branding online, are you consistent? Which means do you have a logo that's consistent on every single channel that you go on? Um, and in this video right here, you can see a logo for our consulting brand that we have, Three Degrees Consulting. Boom, there's a logo. Is that logo on everything that you're doing? Okay. Um, did you get custom cover photos done for all of the channels that need custom cover photos? And if not, all right, that's the next piece. Do you have a headshot? A personal brand requires a headshot. You, boom, smile, right? Because a personal brand is you. You are the brand, which means you need to be showing yourself on there. Now I know for some of you that might seem uncomfortable right now, but trust me, um, if they see you online, right, they're seeing your picture and then you're the person that shows up at the meeting, at the business thing, at the whatever it's going to be, when you are the one that shows up, guess what happens? They recognize you because they've seen a clear headshot of you the entire time that they're going through this. Now, um, I would highly recommend that you get actual professional headshots done, not just like, you know, selfie style with your phone. Um, go get professional headshots done. Why? Because it's always going to be worth it. You'll have 10, 15, 20, however many you end up getting, getting in there to, to use from and choose through and rotate and, and uh, use it all yourself. Not to mention when you get speaking gigs, when people want to put you on podcasts, anytime you want to put yourself or put yourself on a guest blog or anything like that, people are going to want, those people that are hosting you are going to want your headshot and you want to look the best you possibly can for people who don't know who you are yet when you're putting yourself out there. All right. And so again, have your headshot and everything. And by the way, guys, when we talk about building this stuff, really I'm talking about doing it uh, as business pages. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is if let's say you're on Facebook, for example, you've got a Facebook business page on Facebook, you have a cover photo that you can have custom made. Okay. On Facebook, you have a profile photo that can be a headshot of you. It should be your face. Um, zoom, not your whole body. You don't need the whole body. Really you just need the head part, right? Because it's going to be small on most of the social networks. And when it's small like that, we want to be able to see us as clearly as possible. Okay. Um, so that's what I mean by having all of that. And uh, by the way, on your custom cover photo, um, you're going to want to have things like your web address put into there. You're going to want to have, um, your phone number uh, and probably your website and probably your logo as well, right? All of that needs to be incorporated into one custom cover photo. Now, what does a cover photo need to be? Whatever you want it to be, make it represent you, right? So let's say you're primarily doing real estate. Maybe you want to put a picture of a house or the city that you operate in. Um, let's say that you're not doing real estate. Let's say that you're doing um, a digital marketing agency, right? Well, okay, then maybe it's a picture of like, you know, some clip out of like a computer or social networking or whatever. The, what the what the photo is doesn't matter as much as, does it have your website? I, again, I, I do need your website, um, needs your phone number and your logo. Um, if as long as it's got those three incorporated into one nice photo and it's size, the right size, that's also a thing. Um, you can do that. Now, to get a custom cover photo done, just head to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com, Fiverr.com will let you, um, they'll, for five bucks, maybe 10 bucks, uh, somewhere in that range, they'll build a custom cover photo that's the exact proper size for what you're doing. Okay. And then the last part is going to be your handles. You, when I say handles, what I mean is your username or where they find you. So for example, everything that I do for my personal brand of Bob McIntosh, 
can be found at the Bob Macintosh. What do I mean by that? I mean literally go to the Bob Macintosh.com, Facebook.com slash the Bob Macintosh, Instagram.com slash the Bob Macintosh, Twitter at the Bob Macintosh, LinkedIn.com slash profile slash the Bob Macintosh. My handle is always the same across every single platform. And I want to make sure of that. Why? Because then it makes it that much easier for someone to find me. Literally, I can just say, oh, find me at the Bob Macintosh. And no matter what platform or website, if they go to that, they're going to find me. And that's important. I know it seems like a small detail, but that consistency is critical. All right. So you got the same hand everywhere. Now, so just imagine for a second. Now we're talking about your framework, right? So I've got goals, targeting, and content in my strategy aligned towards my target audience. And when they come to find me in step two, I am consistently branded across all of the platforms, my website, everything, all the handles are the same. It's got my headshot nice and clean. My logo is there. I've got cover photos that are all basically the same thing, just size for the right thing, right? That consistency increases your credibility in a potential customer or client's eyes. So it's like, man, wow, look, this Bob McIntosh guy's got it figured out. He's all over the place uh, on every platform, but he looks consistent and the content's consistent and the look and the feel is consistent. These are important things. I know it seems small right now, but this is how we stack, right? So we have our strategy and we stack on top of that, the consistency. And when we do that, we're going to have better results. Now, the third part, is the channels that we choose to be on. Now, I know most of you guys who follow me are in the real estate space, but again, even if you're not in real estate, that's okay. This framework is for you as a brand, no matter what your brand is. It doesn't matter if you're in real estate, it doesn't matter if you're doing healthcare consulting, if you're uh, the nation's leading body expert, if you're um, a local business like a bike shop or a restaurant or something like that, anything, this strategy will work for you if you do it the right way. So again, we've got our strategy, we've got our consistency, uh, and then we've got the third thing is channels. So where do we need to be? Well, ideally everywhere, but I get for a lot of us right now, maybe especially if you're just getting going on your personal branding, you might be thinking to yourself, Bob, there is no way right now that I can be everywhere. Um, all of the time. So let's talk about where you need to be versus where you should be and what that kind of needs to look like. So Facebook, I don't care what anybody says, Facebook is still the 800 pound gorilla. Even though people are leaving it at a more rapid rate than they have in the past, it's still by and far the largest social network out there um, by leaps and bounds over the next biggest one, which is probably uh, Instagram, I would say right now. Okay. So you have to be on Facebook. And when I say on Facebook, I don't mean with your personal page for you as a person. I mean, as a business page for you as a person. So I have my personal Facebook profile, which is facebook.com slash B Macintosh. That's like where I do personal stuff. And I talk about some business stuff there and you can do that. That's fine. But the problem with your personal page on Facebook is, uh, and the same is true for Instagram is that I don't get stats or information and data and I can't run ads. So in other words, I can't boost posts, I can't um, target audiences, uh, and I can't see, how, you know, if I do a video like this, how many minutes of the video did someone watch? How long did they spend watching? What was the average watch time? Uh, at what point did most people fall off the video and stop watching? Um, all of that stuff, I can't tell if I don't have a business page on Facebook and a business page on Instagram, okay? So you got to have those. Now, again, it's going to be a business page for you as a personal brand. So my business page for me is uh, facebook.com slash the Bob McIntosh, right? But it's a business page, which means I can run ads, I get data, I can do targeting, all that stuff. Now, I already know that some of you are going to go, yeah, but Bob, when I post on my business page versus my personal page, my personal page gets a lot more interaction and engagement. It always will. It always will. Because Facebook was designed for people, not for businesses. They just stack businesses on to help make money uh, after, uh, kind of, I don't want to say as an afterthought, but as they grew, they realized that was an opportunity for them. Here's the deal though. While you might get more engagement on your personal uh, account, you can't 
run follow-up sequences. You can't target audiences. I can't get the data and the information that's gonna help it grow at the way it needs to. Um, and at the end of the day, being able to run ads to my page is ultimately where you need to go because Facebook has become a pay to play. And I don't even have that option on a personal account. I don't even get that option, right? Literally, it doesn't even give me the option to do that. It literally just says, hey, here's a post and it lasts for however long it lasts. I can't um, re-up it, I can't boost it, I can't run ads, I can't do targeting, I can't do any of that stuff. So it needs to be on a business page. And by the way, your personal account is gonna own the business page and you can own as many business pages as you want to under your one personal account. I think I'm currently um, an admin on like 47 pages or something like that right now. Um, so there's no, there's no worry about it being like too many pages, that's not a problem. You, you're, you're good, you can have more than enough, okay? So that's Facebook. Instagram, here's the deal, especially for real estate investors, Instagram is growing dramatically. It's still not quite as important as Facebook for real estate, but it's getting there. And if you're not in real estate, it's probably even more important because um, real estate tends to be a lagger um, in the social world uh, in terms of, you know, someone else, if everyone's adopting Instagram, real estate would be the last one to sort of adopt Instagram. And this is not to say that no one's using Instagram for real estate, they definitely are. Um, it's just still not as widely used as Facebook is right now, today, as of the making of this video, which is August of 2019. Now, in a year from now, that could change. In a week from now, that could change. I don't know. But Instagram is definitely something that you're going to want to be on. You're going to want to get on there because engagement is uh, happening at a significantly higher rate. Um, in fact, most of the studies show that the engagement on content on Instagram is three times as much as the same content on Facebook. Let that sink in for a second. Engagement on LinkedIn, or sorry, on Instagram is three times that of what um, Facebook is on average. Now again, um, there's, there's variations. So for example, if I look at my stuff, I put more on Facebook than I do on Instagram. Why? Because I've got almost, uh, I think it's like nine or 10,000 people that follow my content on Facebook. I've only got about 5,000 that follow my content on Instagram. So even if my Instagram content is 30% more than my Facebook content, my audience here is still twice the size, which gives it a bigger impact. But this doesn't mean that I'm not on Instagram. Instagram. It just means that I might focus more content on Facebook because it's going to reach more people right now. Um, and that's the more important part. It may not always be the case though. It may not always be the case that it's going to reach more people. It just depends. So uh, either way, you're going to want to be on Instagram because it's going to be the platform uh, of growth. And by the way, millennials, um, those basically between about 25 and 35 or so roughly, um, as again, as of right now, at least that's the, their age range. Um, and I, to me, like more like 27, 28 to like 36, 37, really, uh, are finding themselves using Instagram at a higher rate than they are Facebook. And for most of us, especially in the real estate game, those are the people that are going to start buying and selling more houses as they get to that point in their life that that's becomes an important thing. So if you're not on Instagram yet, definitely get on there for real estate. If you're not in real estate, get on Instagram because pretty much every other business has already adopted Instagram at a high level. So you're probably already behind the eight ball for that. Okay. Next on here, we've got LinkedIn. LinkedIn has made a big comeback in the last uh, six months to 12 months um, and has really, really, really been proven to be awesome uh, for lead generation specifically, especially on the business to business front. Not as much on the business to consumer side yet, um, but I think as time goes on, LinkedIn is really creating a name for themselves. I mean, they're already known, but they're doing a good job of the way that they're structuring content and flow and and the capabilities that they have. So definitely consider that. If you're a real estate investor, guess what, guys? A lot of people who are in real estate, um, if they're buying or selling houses, are on LinkedIn because the majority of folks have jobs and they know that if they have a job, they need to be on LinkedIn to connect with like-minded people and things like that. So LinkedIn can be huge. Now, there's a lot of strategies that we can utilize to get leads on LinkedIn. I'm not talking about that right now. This is just a framework for you to how to do that, to know how to do that. If you want to know more about diving into lead generation on LinkedIn, it's actually something that we can do for you is uh, cultivate organic leads. It's actually pretty ridiculous what we're able to do on LinkedIn. Um, for pretty much, again, mostly B2B type people. B2C, 
talk to me. We can probably make it work, but it's a little bit more difficult, but B2B for sure, we can rock it. All right. Uh, next is YouTube. As you know, YouTube's always has been a player for a long time. Um, I put it on here because I do believe it's very important to be on YouTube, but YouTube requires video. So if you're terrible at video, YouTube may not be the best strategy. It might be the thing that you implement as you get better at video. Um, use your Facebook lives, for example, to practice and get more polished on video. So you can create things like this and then you can put things like this on YouTube. YouTube, but YouTube is really good for long form content. So this, this video, for example, is going to go up on YouTube. Why? Because, um, this is going to be a longer video and this is not a video that you put on Facebook. People just aren't ready to log into Facebook to do that. But guess what? I can take a smaller form of this video, which is what I did. I took just the first part, the strategy part from this entire video and that I put on Facebook. I think that was only like seven minutes. Maybe, um, this video will be much longer, but I'm going to put this on YouTube. Why? Because YouTube is really lends itself to something like that at a whole different level than, um, anything else does. Uh, and also, um, YouTube, if you're going to do YouTube, uh, you need to spend the time researching keywords, understanding demographics, um, and where to put those keywords and, and all that stuff. Because listen, if you're going to spend the time to create content, you're going to put it on YouTube, you might as well do it the right way. And again, if that's something that you're not sure about, reach out to me, let me know. It's something that my agency, my digital agency, marketing agency can take care of for you. Um, and then the last part here is your website. And I know it's the last on the list, but it's probably one of the most important things that you have a website and not necessarily a website, but uh, really an email marketing list, which we'll get to in the next phase more so. But listen guys, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube are all great for lead generation, but there's a huge problem with them. They're not yours, right? You get likes on your page, you get followers on Instagram, you get connections on LinkedIn, you build subscribers on YouTube. Great. Let's say you have millions of people across all those. Well, if all of a sudden those go down, they don't work for the day and no one can access your, access your content. Um, Facebook or Instagram or, or any of these, these companies, they change the rules on what you can do and what you can post and who's going to see your stuff, which happens all the time, guys, all of the time. Um, like I know what in 2000 between in the last 12 months, there's been like four major algorithm updates for Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then Google in 2018 had over 540 algorithm changes. That's more than one a day. Right? Um, so even though these are great lead generation platforms and we need to be on them, you need to have a website for yourself because if you don't have a website, no one's going to be able to find you uh, if those things change or they go down or anything like that. But your website can be that credibility piece, one. Number two, your website's always yours, which means you control the content, you control how it's seen, you control what it looks like, you have full control over all of it. And that's a huge thing. People underestimate having control of their content. Um, I've literally seen people build groups on Facebook where they, they use the group um, like a, um, like a, a training platform, right? Like a membership platform. And I get it, but guess what guys, what happens if Facebook changes the rules on you, your group, your, your membership platform that you built for free on Facebook is suddenly no good because they changed the rules. And do you think Facebook cares about what you have to say? No, they're a hundred plus billion dollar company. They don't care about your little group. All right. Heck, even if Tony Robbins, massive guy had a group, they wouldn't care. Why? Because their user base is so much bigger than any of that. So why are they going to care about what you're doing for your one thing with your little, you know, they just, they just don't, but your website is always yours. And subsequently an email list, which we'll get to in the next phase more so, but your email list is always yours. So guys, you should be using Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube to drive people to your email list and drive people to your website. Why? Because I would rather they find my content on those places than anywhere else because I have more control over it there. And that's an important thing that people don't always get. All right. So again, strategy, we're stacking consistency of all of our stuff on top of that. Once we're done with that, now we have the right channels and distribution and we have ourselves set up the right way. Guess what? Boom. Now it's time to multiply your um, content out there. Now, what I mean by multiply is get more people to see it. Multiply the views, multiply the subscribers, multiply the followers, multiply um, everything, right? And 
the only way to do that is to do, uh, generally speaking, to do paid marketing. All right, so Facebook ads, for example. Guess what? Let's say I do um, the short video, the seven minute video on Facebook, and it just, it's like doing great, it's killing it, great. I can spend money on Facebook ads because I built it the right way with the right channel and the right consistency on Facebook as a business page to run ads. I built it that way, so now I can boost that post. And guess what? If I spend money on ads, by the way guys, if you spend money on ads, you should be doing it for content that landed well. If a content didn't get well received, don't spend money to make it better because it just wasn't good, right? Instead, spend the money to make the content uh, that did well do even better by going out there. And videos, guys, is one of the best ways to do that. Uh, I'm not gonna dive into that now, but Facebook ads is a great way to multiply your views, multiply who's seeing you out there. Uh, the second is Google ads. And this could be AdSense, this could be um, YouTube ads, I'm gonna include in this as well. That could work as well. Same idea as Facebook ads, just get more people to see what you're doing. Uh, next is SEO, and this is why you gotta have a website. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. If you don't know what that means, it basically means how do I make my content on my website and my website in general as friendly as possible for Google so that when people search for things, they come find me. They see my stuff, my website as high or as close to first place in Google as possible. That's what SEO is. And there's a lot that goes into it, guys. There's over 200 different factors in Google's algorithm that determine how things rank. So there's a lot of things that go in there. And again, if that's something that you need help with or want help with, reach out. I've got an SEO team that can get you, um, depending on what you're doing, but can get you to the first page, usually within a couple of months or less, um, if we do the right things. And again, there's, I'm going to put a little star there. There's some caveats there. I can't, not, not every keyword can we do that for, um, but we can definitely work with you uh, if you need to. And last but not least, and guys, this is probably still one of the most important, which is email marketing, which is why you want to have your email list and generally why you have a website because your website is going to drive opt-ins to your email list. So you can do email marketing. The last that I heard for 2018, was somewhere around $1 spent on email marketing generates an average ROI of $43. Okay. Or, or it was like around 43 and that number might be, be rough, but guys, even let's just say, even if it's half of my number that I just said, let's just say it's $22 or $21. Okay. For $1 spent on email marketing, you're going to make $22 or more stats show closer to $40. Okay. Think about that for a second. So why would you not have an email list? All right. In fact, if you're watching this video, you likely joined my email list. Why? Because I understand the power of emails. I understand that now that I have your email and I've created great content that you're finding value in, I can continue to communicate with you in a way that is going to improve my bottom line of my agency, what we're doing in our agency, because I know that people like you are going, probably watching this video going, wow, this is all great stuff. Okay. And you might be saying to yourself, okay, great. Uh, I watched that video Bob did and it was awesome and it all makes sense, but um, I don't know how to do all this stuff. I mean, I just want to, you know, pay him to take care of it for me, which by the way, you can do that. You can call me and say, Hey, listen, I want you guys to create my personal brand for me and we'll build it from A to Z and do everything for you. Um, including getting you on video, filming content, directing you on how to do things like all of it. Right. We can do that, but you might not have even known what to do. So now you're on my list, finding value, watching this video going, wow. Okay. This is great stuff. And maybe you don't need my help. Maybe you're like, you know what? I can do this myself. Awesome. Go do it yourself, man. Even better. Um, the point of the, this video is not to say, Hey, go buy my services. The point of this video is to provide content and value for you such that you keep coming back for more and more and more in the future because I know that if I can do this enough times for you, I can build enough value and content for you. At some point when you're ready, you'll, you'll be thinking of Bob McIntosh to say, you know what? I need someone to help me with this stuff. Let me go to Bob and he's going to be my guy. Okay. So this is really a framework for building your personal brand. This is how you're going to get going with it. Hopefully you guys found some value in this video. I truly appreciate you guys spending the time to be on with me in this video. I know, um, I think your time is valuable and I respect it. So I'm going to end this now, but um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you so much for being on. As always, make sure you subscribe. Uh, my digital agency is called Three Degrees Consulting, which you can see right up here. Um, and follow me at the Bob McIntosh on any of the platforms. You can find me for more great content. I'm going to be putting on a whole lot more as time goes on. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you guys real, real soon. Thanks guys. Bye.